Hi everyone, in this presentation I will show you how to perform a one-way ANOVA. The first thing to know about the one-way ANOVA is that our independent variable has to be either nominal or ordinal. And our dependent variable has to be interval ratio. So I've already looked through the codebook and found a possible hypothesis that would be perfect for a one-way ANOVA. What we're going to compare is the different social classes and how many hours they spent a week on email. So our independent variable is going to be social class and our dependent variable is going to be time spent on emails. To perform my one-way ANOVA, I would go to Analyze, Compare Means, and select One-Way ANOVA. From here, I'm going to right-click on the list of variables and select Display Variable Names. Next, I will locate my independent variable class and place it in the factor box. Now I'm going to locate my dependent variable email hours and place it in the dependent list. There's one more step before I hit OK. I'm going to click on options and make sure that the descriptive box is checked. Then press continue and finally OK to obtain our results. So let's interpret the descriptive statistics first. The lower class has an average of 3.1 hours of emails per week with a standard deviation of 8.939. They also have a 95% confidence interval that ranges between 1.29 and 4.92. This means that in the larger population, the lower class could have an average anywhere between 1.29 and 4.92. The same procedure can be applied to the rest of the groups that we're comparing. So as we can see, the major pattern is as we move up the social class ladder, there is more time spent on emails. So we have the working class with an average of six and a half, the middle class with an average of eight, and the upper class with an average of about nine and a half. All in all, the pattern shows that as you move up the social class ladder, you're going to be spending more time on email uh, a day. Looking at the 95% confidence intervals, gives us information about where the real population average could potentially lie. Now let's turn to the ANOVA. For the ANOVA, we'll want to report the degrees of freedom for between groups, we'll want to report the degrees of freedom for within groups, and then we'll also want to report the F statistic, and finally the significance level, which is also known as our p-value. If our p-value is less than our alpha, then we can reject the null hypothesis. In this case, let's say we set our alpha at 0.01. Our p-value is 0.004, and therefore it is less than our alpha of 0.01, and we can reject the null hypothesis.